Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I'm your host, Elliot Pierre. And as per usual, we're going to start this show off the same way we start every episode off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million things with your time, and the fact that you spend it with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. Oh, she caught me, loves. You're listening to the Max City Morning Show. Right, and we're back. I'm excited about today's guest for many reasons, but the main one is because uh, she brought us some pretty cool gifts. So as you guys know, I do not introduce my guests. I let them do that themselves. So on that note, can you please tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about? Thank you, Elliot. Uh, my name is Juliette Miranda. I'm uh, originally from El Salvador. We emigrated to Canada when I was seven and okay. g- grew up in Edmonton. Um, and now I've been in Fort McMurray for about 16 years. Okay. And I'm excited to share my business with you today. It's called Kid Drop and uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Okay. Well, I'm excited to have you. So first and foremost, let's talk about what Kid Drop is all about. Yes, so Kid Drop is a transportation company exclusively for kids. So we move kids around to and from school, extracurricular activities, even custody exchanges between exes. Oh, cool. So it's just a safe, reliable service um, that helps parents out move kids by themselves to and from, you know, the, the proper adult on the other side. Wow. Okay, I've seen the bus before. Yeah. But I thought it was just literally like you pick kids up at the beginning of the school day, like because parents can't always drop their kids to school or sure. whatever, and you drop them to school or um, not school, but what's it called? Early school care or oh yeah, entry? like day daycares, daycares and stuff, daycares and stuff, or like pick them up from daycare and then take them to school because there's that gap for parents. I had no idea that you picked them up. And took them to like a, like sporting events and stuff. That's right. Yeah, no. And so we're oh, a door to door service. So we okay. come directly to your door, collect them from yeah. a driver in uniform. That's right. Um, we issue them IDs. So our drivers have IDs and our children have IDs. And they right. come on the service. And then we we t- take them to you know if it's a, a birthday party or grandparents' house or the school. Wow. Yeah, and then they're handed over to the proper administrator, and uh, all this is done in advance so that we know where they're going cool. and what time they have to be there. That's a really unique service. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> that would be super beneficial, especially for parents who like are working shift or like you just said, like for a birthday party. Like, hey, listen, maybe if I have two kids, I got to go this way. The other kids got to go that way. That's right. It's really, you know, it's meant to be a helping hand to parents because like many of us, we're from somewhere else. We don't right. have the same support system with grandparents or sisters, aunties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's nice to have, you know, uh, somebody that you don't have to just ask for a favor from, right? You know, just That's right. Call them up and, and schedule it and, and we'll be there on time. We're open seven days a week. And okay. yeah. What are your seven days a week? What are the hours of operation? Um, so we actually, so we recently purchased a commercial uh, building, okay. which, which will allow us to extend our hours to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, wow. Yes. You Neat. know, there's shift workers. There's people that, you know, get up at 430 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those kids need to go to daycare or say you have a sitter late at night and yeah. then, you know, you come home and you don't want to pack everybody up to drive the sitter home. Right. We'll just come by, take the sitter back to their house and... Yeah, oh, so we're neat. available uh, even late into the evening. Okay. Yeah. Now, how... This is fascinating to me. This is my favorite part about the show because there's a lot of things in the community that I think people don't know about. That's right. And I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. So, like, the cool thing is, like, every th- my facial expressions completely genuine. We've never talked about your business before. No, we haven't. No. This is amazing. So, all right. So let's, uh, from a cost model, how does this work? Does it, is it... Like uh, I, if I just need a want a ride one time, I pay for the ride one time, or is it a monthly fee, or how yes. does that all break down? So we have two options. We have the daily rate, uh, so it could be one way. So if your child just needs a ride after school home, yeah, or in the morning to school, um, or round trip service. Okay. So you know if you're just going one way, it's twenty five dollars. If you're yeah. going round trip, it's thirty five dollars for the day. Okay. And then there's monthly fees if you're wanted to commit to a monthly service. Okay. So yeah, like let's say. My little guy, if I was like, listen, I can't take him to school anymore in the morning. Yeah. I want you to come pick him up every single day. So there's like a, there's a special subscription. category subscription. Thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, there is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then there's a different rate for evenings and weekends. Of Those course. are a bit different. Of um, yeah. But we, you know, we're definitely able to take people to, you know, tournaments or, you know, practices, early morning, late practices. And it's, you know, some kids are just a little of a different age where they're mm-hmm. able to travel a bit more freely, but not mm-hmm. yet uh, right. 
old enough for tr uh, regular transit. Yeah, a transit so, or a cab. Yeah, transit yeah. or a cab. And then, you know, the coach is waiting on the other end. Other moms are waiting on the other end. So you mm, just schedule mm -hmm. it and uh, and the service is provided. How did you come up with this idea? Um, <laughs> so interestingly enough, I am a single mom. So, okay. I, you know, it's of two kids. Right. And they each have their own schedule. You know, it's it's different when you have multiple kids. And say even if you're a stay-at-home mom or, you know, mm. um, where you have one healthy kid and one sick kid, right? So you okay. can't pack up your sick kid to go take your healthy kid to hockey. Not nowadays. So, <laughs> not, especially not nowadays, right? You really want to yeah. be, yeah, you want to be conscious of that. And, and so kids are missing out on activities. Participation is down. And right. this is just another avenue to allow those resources to flourish right because what happens is when you don't have a, a high enough attendance these classes get canceled that's right right or right. or there's less options for for time slots so yeah um so yeah we're just we really think that this is a real benefit to the community and to parents and i just wanted to express how why this is a safe service you know yeah. um you know who's the face behind it because i think a lot of people um don't get to see that you know we just we just got a building so really everything before that was just done via email and right. phone conversation. So yeah. I'm hoping to put a face to, to the name, name. today. <laughs> cool. How long have you been in business for? Uh, we've been in business two years. We're going okay. on our third year. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, we have four vehicles in our fleet right now, um, okay. operating full time. And we are looking to expand with four more by September so we can be citywide for school. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So currently we're in the city are you available for schools? So for schools, we're exclusively north of the bridge. So okay. Thickwood, Dickensfield, uh, right. yeah, Parsons Creek, right. Kimberly. Yeah, and so that you, area. you want to expand to the, the schools on this side? Yeah, we, okay. we've got downtown. We've got up in Gregoire, Beacon yeah. Hill. So yeah. yeah, we, you know, the, and, and we have, we're generating, uh, trying to build the interest yeah. up in yeah. order to, yeah, support the service everywhere. Wow. Mm -hmm. What are you, like, it's kind of a no-brainer of a service. <laughs> Like it's, I've never heard of it before, but you're like, yeah, like this would actually help a lot of families. I know I grew up in a family of three, so I'm the eldest of three. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it was like a nightmare for my mother. Like when I had like soccer and then my little sister would have dance and then my brother would have soccer at the same time, but on a different team somewhere else. And it was like just a constant juggling act. That's right. It's yeah. like, there's, um, sorry, uh, you know, as a parent, I remember my mom saying to me that she felt like she was a chauffeur mm -hmm. all the time. She's yeah. like, I'm just driving you around. That's all I do with you kids. It's That's like, right. You know, we're here for there. And you're getting mad when you're like, Mom, we got to go. We got to go. I'm going to be late. And, yeah. you know, that's... So it, it's just something that hasn't been expanded and we have yeah. really big plans for it. Yeah. We want to take it and franchise it and get it out there to other markets in Alberta and across Canada. Yeah. So we've got really big, ambitious goals. That's good. You got yeah. to dream big. Yeah. You listen, you'll get there if you're focused and if it's a passion, it'll happen. It is. Yeah. You know, I we have a huge support system behind us. Yeah. We have Startup YMM mm. um, where I have, a, I'm participating in a mentorship program. Okay. I have, you know, uh, our clients are great. We have investors behind us. Yeah. Um, you know, we just you, you, we have everything it takes to just go all out. So, That's so we're just cool. super excited. Yeah. Cool. So, you said at the beginning of the show you have been in Fort McMurray for a little while. What brought you to Fort McMurray? <clears throat> um, so I came initially. Uh, my dad actually had a business in town. It okay. was, it's called Romeo's Tile, and uh, I would come up here to help him and my mom. You know, they just had a mom and pop little tile store. Right. Um, and after a few years, bought it out. Yeah. Grew it out, yeah. and then um, about four years ago, I just took a step back from that, and yeah. now. Focus um, on this. Just focusing on this, yeah. yeah. And so your parents immigrated to Canada. Yeah. Was uh, Edmonton the first stop in the immigration process for you guys? No, it no. took us. To, it took us uh, almost three years to get to Canada. We made our way to Mexico. Uh, we're in Mexico for eight months. Okay. Uh, lived in California for two years, and okay. then eventually made our way to Canada. So, so, what was the point of that? Like, you just—it seems like you went hot, hot, <laughs> hot. <laughs> Freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Actually. Yeah. Um, well, there was a war in El Salvador. It was a really dangerous time. Okay. And uh, so there was a lot of uh, instability in the country. Yeah. And right. uh, so we went 
to Mexico initially to try and find some sort of avenue to get across. Mm. Um, and we did get across illegally at the time through, okay. through coyotes. Okay. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but that's that's how um, Latin Americans typically do it when they cross the border. Right. And uh, there were some risks. There were some really uh, scary times. We ended up going to jail for some time. Yeah. Um, and... But eventually made our way into the U.S., yeah. stuck to kind of our Latino community. Right. But then there was a big um, movement to uh, have everybody, sorry, uh, immigration was really hard in the, right. in the U.S., yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, they were yeah. deporting a lot of illegals. Yeah, that's right. And then so our family had to make a decision. Do we try our way north or do we go back home, right? That's and, right. And um, my parents have always been, uh, you know, Big dreamers, yeah, brave people, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know we we took a chance coming to Canada, thinking that we could eventually get deported from Canada as that's well. That's right. That's right. We just thought it was uh, it was an opportunity, and yeah. it it paid off in a big way for all of us. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so grateful. That's for awesome. Yeah. Northern, that's a great story. Northern neighbors are a little more friendly, I think. Yeah. 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 That's right. Less, less chance of deportation. That's right. <laughs> that's just, right. More welcoming. Deal with the cold. You just got to deal with it. There's there's a trade-off here. You're welcome (laughs) here if you want. Yeah, that's exactly. (laughs) On a day like today, you're just like, ah, you know, it's kind of cold. That's true. Oh, what a great, fascinating story. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, listen, this is a good segue in regards to uh, Tanner's segment. It's called the Max City Minute. Tanner's going to ask you some questions. I don't know what he's going to ask you. I wish you nothing but the best of luck, Tanner. Hit her with the Max City Minute. (laughs) All righty, question number one. What is your favorite story from your time transporting the kids of Fort McMurray? What is my favorite story? Um, Gosh, there's so many. Well, I'll give you an example. Last week, um, I challenged my drivers to ask the kids what they wanted to be when they grow up, right? So I'm like, just shoot me a little texts throughout the day of kind of what is on everybody's mind. And we got some of the greatest answers. One just said, I just want to be a dad. When I grew up, I just want to be a dad. Oh, my oh God. My I think God. we all kind of got teary-eyed about it. But, yeah. you know, they say the darndest things. They think, uh, you know, they call uh, our drivers Miss Miss Melanie. Yeah. Miss Ashley. And yeah. it's uh, it's just such a neat opportunity. I think you get to know these kids so closely, their parents closely. And uh, yeah, with, I just take a lot of pride in that relationship building. Question number two, what is your favorite event you've helped transport a child to? Favorite event. Um, I, I think one of my favorites is seeing the kids in uniform going to martial arts. Uh, you know, they look yeah. like little ninjas. Yeah. And then so you take them to, to Bowman's or Fort Martial Arts. And it's uh, it's just really neat to see them all, like, you know, dressed up and excited. But actually, no, I will mention, we did do a field trip out to the airport uh, for for a daycare group. And okay. um, they were out there checking out the helicopters with, uh, oh, yeah, neat. Phoenix helicopters. And yeah. that, was a, that was a really fun no trip, doubt. I think, for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Question number three. What is your favorite part of running a local business that helps out so many local families? Do you know, my, f- my favorite part Um, is that this business model allows us to hire and employ parents, specifically mothers. So all of my drivers are mothers. They're able to transport their kids to school while working for us. Mm. So it's, it's almost uh, an added value on both ends where, you know, our employees appreciate that they're able to take their kids to and from school, which is, it's a big, uh, uh, it's almost like a luxury. Not, 100%. not, not everybody allows you to do that while still kind of, you know, making money on the side. That's right. And, uh, and, and there's a comfort level in knowing that, you know, you're, who's driving your children, our mothers with our mm. own kids. It's like, you know, yeah. how, how much more of a built in safety could you have? So yeah. I just think it's, it's a neat opportunity to employ moms. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Question number four, what is the weirdest place you've had to transport a child to? Um, I don't think there's any weird places. I think no. they usually go to and from where they're supposed to. So Pretty they've standard. been there before. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's any too many surprises on that end. <laughs> and your final question, what is the first thing you remember when you arrived in Canada? Well, one of the biggest shocks is, you know, we went, I, I started schooling in 
in Los Angeles yeah. and I started learning English. So I grew up speaking Spanish, right. learned English, came to Canada. My parents were like, everybody here speaks French. We got to put you in a French school. So oh. I started So I started mixing up my Spanish, English, and French in grade one. So yeah. I ended up failing grade one because right. I was just, you know, you the languages. In three languages. In three yeah. languages. At, at home, we only speak this. At school, we learn this. But all my friends speak English. So, right. yeah. Right. Um, so that kind of put me behind a year <laughs> through school <laughs> right away. No doubt. But, um, yeah, we, yeah, got back on track. <laughs> Those have been your five questions. Thank so you, Tanner. did you... Have you held on to all those languages? I have to assume Spanish you held on to. I, I have Spanish, yeah. I have English and a little bit of French, yeah. Wow, yeah, good I for you. Play. I only speak English. I was going to say, that's two and a half more languages than yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I struggle with English. Yeah, two and yeah. a half. Uh, wow, yeah. that's a, what an interesting journey. At such a young age for you, too. So I have to imagine there's not, like, you still have memories, but a lot of it isn't still there you, memories fade after that kind of timeline uh from el salvador you mean yes. yeah the neat thing is that i've been fortunate enough to travel back home nice. and visit Beautiful. family throughout yeah. the years not so much right now in the COVID era course, but um right. but no i uh you know I, we still have family there my parents are there they, they have a house there so we you know it's uh it's still very much a part of you know where I'm from. My no children joke. have been there, and uh, I, you know, maintaining maintaining the language even yeah. with them is right. uh, is definitely important for me. So your kids speak Spanish then? They speak a little bit. Okay. They like yeah, we practice words. I yeah. want to wait until they've they've dominated the reading writing in English, in English for sure because I understand the struggle. Struggle of that. with that. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Uh, like no disrespect, but it, screw your culture even that's going to just be handy for those kids to know two languages yeah like i wish somebody when i was young would have just pushed me into a second language so i'd know because it's not happening now <laughs> yeah. yeah they'll they'll absorb some of it just by hearing it and being around oh sure and yeah. they do yeah, yeah they do sure. they, they pick up on it so it's so it, sometimes they'll ask me you know what does this mean or what mm. were you and grandma talking about and yeah and um and one of my good good friends actually because so i'm part of startup ymm right and uh, so great support system there, too, yeah, yeah. with Darshna, Mia, yeah. um, Lisa. So Mia, she's also fluent in Spanish, and she tutors my kids in Spanish. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's, nice. you know, it's so communal here. Yeah. It's like everybody knows somebody. We all kind of, you know. That's right. Yeah, so it's great. That's it's exactly great. it. They're slowly Very learning. Very cool. Mm -hmm. that, I, I'm taken aback by this business model. Uh, I, it's so smart. Thank you. It really is. And like. Uh, everything you keep saying, I just keep getting blown away more and more. Like the, the model of having mothers drive the buses. Like, yeah. Well, let me share a couple other features that we have. Yeah, please. So all of our vehicles have cameras on board. Okay. So there's one facing our driver and one facing the road. Right. We have um, uh, seat belts and booster seats okay. on board. Um, we have all of our drivers possess defensive driving, first mm -hmm. aid, um, you know, criminal record checks yeah uh you know clean driver's abstracts right and uh yeah it's just there's there's so much safety built in that's right and we're slowly integrating new technologies also into our into our business platform right that eventually i want this id to be able to ping mm. the child in the vehicle send a message to mom yeah you're on the bus yeah. and ping them off yeah they've arrived right on the bus so yeah, yeah, just yeah. to increase the the fluidity and transparency for parents that's right because it you know the technology is there it's yeah. just about yeah yeah it's, getting it's, it and incorporating it into the business that's it's right. such a good idea <laughs> like i'm taken aback like i'm fortunate enough where i get to drop my child to and from school every day and uh, i love it it's like the best part of my day i gotta be honest sorry tanner <laughs> sorry uh hanging out keegan i, I ain't trying to yeah. compete <laughs> so but it but it's one of those things where like the safety aspect comes into it and I, i'm i have the luxury of doing that and that's what it is yeah. so i know that like parents they worry about their kids and if there's like a safe alternative yes and that they know like you've put in this these precautions and like i just love the aspect of like having moms do it as well yeah. and having their kids like talk about like when people work for you that's an added bonus money is obviously the transaction for a service that's right. but if they can be like hey my kid gets to come on the bus and i get to take my child to school every day that's an added bonus in regards to yeah this is what i <coughs> want to stay and work with this organization wow really good out of the box <laughs> thinking but 
It makes sense. Thank you. Very cool. Yeah. And I love the gifts you brought us. I'm literally, Tanner, hit me up. <laughs> this is like baby face Elliot without the beard. And I actually have like a load of hair in this picture. And this is the Mac City. I'm going to use this as a press pass. So when me and Tanner go and we film on location, I'm going to be putting this around Beautiful. my neck. So thank you for the gifts. You're very welcome. Yeah. You're very welcome. Anyways, listen, I know that we're either on time or a little bit over time right now. So okay. 20 minutes flies. But before we cut you loose, uh, everybody gets a shameless shout out or plug. You got the mics, the lights and the cameras on you. Have fun. Um, so I do want to give a special shout out to my children who have, um, you know, are such a big part of Kid Drop, building Kid Drop, supporting Kid Drop, and really, you know, build the sacrifice with me because they, uh, you know, as a single mom, there's only so much of me to go around and they're just such troopers. Um, my business partner, Josh, you're incredible. I couldn't have done any of this without you. And Shanina Naveen, you know, you're the back phone but behind this so thank you so much and we have such a huge community behind us and uh you know please support us check us out um you know share our posts and yeah we were happy to be growing in Fort McMurray starting in Fort McMurray and going out from here so thanks everybody very cool <laughs> well thank you for coming on the show feel free to come back as many times as you want thank you Ellie. and if there's any other of like your employees your business partner anybody Tell them to come on the show. But like anytime you guys have anything going on or expansion is happening or you want to get your message out, that seat is always open for you. Thank you so much, yeah. Elliot. Appreciate yeah. it. You're more Appreciate than welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo and the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. It means the world to me. Hopefully you're having a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I just died at this. That's another Max City Morning Show done. Talk about quenching your ugly thirst. Really?